myself, um, Ross Fischler, like I said, the AP currently and uh, principal next year. Uh, Christina Schubert is our AVID co-coordinator with Ms. Jones, so she does a lot of our um, coordination of not only logistics but uh, curriculum and that sort of thing. Um, so she'll talk a little bit about our AVID homeroom today. Uh, then we have our wonderful students that we'll introduce here at the end of the presentation. Uh, what is AVID? So a lot of times we see this um, acronym and you see little images and what does it mean? Um, we kind of put this slide together because it's really our journey uh, as a school. What, what have we done already? Uh, we started with Abbott Elective. Uh, Dilly, were, were you in Abbott Elective when you were here? You weren't. So, perfect example. We got a great student. Um, wasn't getting that Abbott experience. So Abbott Elective only taught maybe, what, 60 kids at, at its peak. And we're really missing out all these skills uh, across the whole building. So we started with the Abbott Elective. We went to, um, it's an application-based class, so uh, can you tell about our interview process a little bit through that, um, what that um, looks like? Yeah, so our students, they have to apply to be in this class, so um, they come, they get an application, they have to say why they would like to be in it, they have to come to a formal interview, um, which is always scary for them as sixth graders, they sit down and they ask them questions, like, can you commit to three full years of being in this program? Um, our, our biggest one is, I'm like, are you prepared for a mom at school? Like, we're gonna, we're gonna pick on you. I'm gonna open your binder. I'm gonna say, where's your homework? Where's your stuff at? Are you ready to have your mom here at school? And that's what they sign up for. So, um, once they get in there with us for uh, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Yeah. And uh, was that the first time you two had interviewed for, you know, a job or? That you, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and so that's a big soft skill going. I mean, we're doing a lot of interview for staff, and we have to teach our kids how yeah. to interview. They can have great skills, but if we can't show off those skills, um, they're not prepared. So the interview process kind of starts that for Abbott elective class. Um, we're going to talk extensively about Abbott and Homer. That was kind of our next step um, as, a, as a journey into Abbott. Um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but every single student uh, two years ago, I believe, we incorporated, incorporated Abbott and Homer. So it went from 60 kids up to 540. So every single kid gets all the opportunities that Abbott provides. Um, and then we even added another layer, which is Abbott Fusion Time. Uh, in that class, you really are designed to navigate junior high. Um, if we can all remember junior high, it's um, turbulent, to say the least. And how do we do that? How do we, how do we guide them through that piece? That could be team building, so getting kids comfortable working in a group and collaborating. It, it allows them to social emotional wellness, so we do a lot of things like restorative practices, circles, get them comfortable talking about um, working through issues, uh, note taking, literacy, writing skills. So not only is it organizational, I think a lot of times people think of Abbott as organization. That's a component of it, but it's a lot of uh, hard, you know, content skills as well that we work on in that app program. It's also where we've put a lot of um, as we've gone through. COVID and we've got a lot of technology and computers in front of kids, this is where we're teaching those soft skills. Like how do you look somebody in the eye? How do you shake hands? How um, do you do an interview? How do you do a, a public speaking? How do you go about those processes? Um, that's where we put all those skills as well. And so as you walked in, you probably saw some uh, locker talkers, which we, we call them. We kind of took a, a page out of Wellington uh, up, up north of Denver, they had, we, we did a tour of a national demo school, and we said, what can we bring back into Watson that would help our kids? It really makes them recognize uh, and for their accomplishments. I mean, it could be as simple as uh, they donated to the Thanksgiving uh, fundraiser, so they got a little turkey. Um, it it kind of takes that football helmet approach of little accomplishments along the way, and then they actually take that with them at the end of the year. We have it on contact paper, and so they can look back at the year and say, look at all the things I did. I got a shout out for being a positive member of my class. Um, all those kinds of things. So every single kid has their name on the locker. They have uh, recognition for what they've done. And we really think that builds pride in the building, that, that they have their name here. They're part of this building. Uh, college and career field trips, I know we were talking about you want to go to Metro State. Um, we've gone all over the all over the state to CU, the Air Force Academy. Um, what are some other CSU Pueblo? CSU Pueblo, <coughs> CCS, Metro Pikes Peak. Yeah. yeah. So really getting them thinking about college and, and going to college. The first time I went to college, I had never been to university. So it, it takes that fear out of our kids to go to uh, different colleges. Um, student accountability. You know, we always talk about it's a family. Well, sometimes in families you have to say. We, uh, 
we're pushing you, and that's going to be a little uncomfortable, but we're going to talk to you about things you're doing well, things you can improve on, and that's part of the process. Uh, it's just student and teacher positive recognition, it, it's important to be valued and, and recognized when you're doing the right things. I think sometimes in schools we focus too much on the negatives, and how can we uh, you know, cheer on people for being doing the, the right thing, being positive. Um, organizational strategies. I was a terrible organizer in junior high. My notebook just exploded when I came into a room. I lost so many pencils. Uh, my mom was an elementary principal, and I'm pretty sure like half the budget for the school went to my pencil supply because uh, it was just that. Um, engaging classrooms, we do things like Socratic seminars, philosophical chairs, and, and really, like I said, that team building uh, approach. But ultimately, what is Abbott? It's getting our kids ready for college and career. So we're a, we're a bridge to high school, we're a bridge to career, and we have to get those kids ready. So not only content-wise, but just soft skills as well. Uh, Abbott Summer Institute, we're preparing to go that, uh, to Denver, but it, it really, it's not just our students, but our teachers that benefit from these Abbott programs, that we get great PD. These are good instructional strategies that we can bring into the classroom. They're embedded, they're included in everything that we do, it really aligns with the TLC, um, our teaching and learning cycle for the district. <clears throat> they're great presenters, they're people that are in buildings. It's not hypothetical, it's things that they're actually doing, and so taking best practices from around the country, because you really get, even around the world, because Abbott is a, a global program and, and support system, and then that shares out to our teachers, that they can translate in the classroom and, and have engaging lessons to help our kids. Okay, so we're going to show a little video. This, this is our kids talking about Avid, and so I'll play this for a second. Avid stands for Advancement via Individual Determination. Avid is basically a class that gives you a family and keeps you organized, like with the binders and stuff. Like everyone this year has binders here. So it keeps us more organized, like with our lockers, and we check grades every week so we know what our grades are. Avid is a class that helps you organize, and it gets you set for college. It also teaches you how to prepare yourself for yourself in life later on. Avid keeps you organized, and it's like a class that like makes you feel comfortable, and like you're never left out. I like that the, you have the support of the binders and stuff, so it helps you. I also like how comfortable the class is and that it's a no-judgment zone. So when you walk in, everybody's kind, everybody's calm, nobody judges you. I like the organization because I remember before my binder wasn't like all nice and clean like how it is now. It helps me with my grades because it keeps me my stuff organized so I don't lose stuff. I remember in sixth grade I wasn't I wasn't a okay student, and then seventh and eighth grade I got a lot better with my grades. Avid has um, really helped me raise my grades. I was able to get my grades from like a B to an A, so it really worked. Well, we do grade checks, and like that helps me with my grades because normally, like if I have like a low grade. Then, and I see that, and I know what's missing, then I'll be able to like get that grade back up. Advent's not about just organization. Sometimes we do fun stuff, like sometimes we go, last year we went on field trips. Nobody judges you. It's a comfortable spot that you can go to to just calm down. And it's not all just about learning. It's about getting to know other people. So Ms. Schubert's going to talk a little bit about our AVID homeroom and, and what that looks like specifically. AVID stands for Advancement Via Individual Determination. Nope. <laughs> there. Thank you. <laughs> um, so we started our AVID homerooms um, kind of right before COVID hit and kind of slowed us down a little bit. Um, but as we got those homerooms started, we took the best of what AVID was offering some of our kids and gave it to the entire school. Um, so those school, those classes, every single student has. It is either right before lunchtime or right after lunchtime. And it's in those classes that we work on their organization and um, restorative practices. We do our circles there. And they're really small class sizes. So the largest class we have in the entire building is 16. So every single teacher, with the exception, I believe, of two, has a homeroom, te uh, homeroom class of theirs. And continually, when we poll our students and we're like, do you have somebody you trust in the building? Is um, who's your favorite teacher? Who can you relate to? It's almost always that homeroom teacher. That's the one that those students are building their relationships with fastest. 
big part of this is our binders. We have big binders. They go everywhere with us. Um, they're building wide now. It's just become a part of who we are. It used to be a big thing that only our advocates had them, and now it's just part of being being at Watson. Everybody has a binder. Everybody's expected to keep it organized. Everybody knows what they are. Um, I was kind of surprised how quickly it integrated into, into what we do. So every student has um, a divider for every single class. Everything they get goes right in there. And that makes it so they're prepared all the time. When they come to homeroom and they have a little extra time, they open it up to math and pull out their math homework. They open it up social studies, pull out their social studies homework. Everything's with them all the time. Um, we had a planner. We've always had a planner. We just didn't always use our planner super effectively before we had homerooms. Um, our students are expected to put a topic in homework for every single class, every single day. Um, and you can't say, I read book in book class. Like They have to say, what book did you read? What chapters of that book did you read? So if your parents ask what you did, did you tell them specifically what happened in that class? And then homework, if they had any. So that um, it's a way for parents to know, it's a way for our students to know. Um, it's a big shift coming from elementary and, and coming up to middle school for the first time. Seven teachers, seven different personality types. Um, this keeps them organized. And like we said before, the, this is their home field. Their homeroom teacher is the one that's like, did you do it? Did, it? did you talk to your math teacher? Did you actually get that turned in? Um, circles became part of it. This was just this year, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, go ahead. Yeah. So we went to a, a restorative practices uh, training. We became trainer trainers and really rolled that in because coming out of the pandemic, um, some kids weren't okay, and we needed to kind of have that relationship built back up with them, form a community again. And so we thought that was a great way to inject kind of our AVID, our TLC, and the restorative practices all under one umbrella, and and really build relationships with the kids so they have a an L and a connection. So it's just question based, like um, it says up there, would you rather go stay in a cabin in the mountains or go explore a historical city? And the kids just respond and they say, I'd rather do this, I'd rather do that. Um, and just having that like downtime, like the expectation is to come in and share as you want. Um, you can share as little or as much as you want. When kids walk into the home room, you can see them kind of take a deep breath and they're like, oh, okay, this one's easy. This is a class that I can relate to. Um, one day a week we also do grade checks. Um, long gone are the time where, where students can say, I have no idea what my grade is in that class or why. Um, every single week we pull up their grades. Every single week they look at their grades. They say, this is what is missing. They say, um, I'm missing a, a literacy assignment. I already emailed my teacher. I'm waiting for them to grade it. So it's just building that accountability so that maybe the grades aren't what they want to be, but they know at least why they have the grades they do and what needs to be done. We also do reflections. Um, they pick a class that they are struggling with. It can be a class that they have the lowest grades in, or it can be a class that they just struggle with, that maybe um, they have the hardest time with that teacher, that teacher goes too fast, or um, they sit next to their best friend and they need to reevaluate that choice. Um, once a week we talk about it, like what can we do to make this class better? On Thursdays, this is something we started this year, um, we started an access pass, and this is kind of like your more traditional homeroom where if you're struggling in a class, you can go see that teacher. So on Thursday, you can request te uh, students from anywhere in the building to come see you and get extra help in that class. And that's something that we didn't have before. So now, every single Thursday, you can have extra students come to you so you get extra time with them.